Hello, everyone, and welcome to MSK Unknown Case Series, case number 56. Before I begin, please subscribe to the channel. Please support our mission on the MedED page. So here we have a frontal view of the left hip, and this patient is a young patient complaining with left hip pain. And the finding or the question I have for you is this patient is predisposed to what pathology? Is it infection, sarcomatous transformation, inflammatory arthritis, or labral tear? What is this patient predisposed to? And of course, the answer here is a labral tear. And let me explain why this is a case of potentially having a labral tear. So on this frontal view of the left hip, notice there's no acute fracture at this location, but we do have this finding here. There's sort of osseous protuberance at the femoral head neck junction. Normally in a, in, a, in a hip, you'll have a nice offset between the femoral head and neck, like a nice concavity here, but we've lost that with this bump here. This is known as cam type femoral acetabular impingement, which we're gonna discuss in a little bit. And notice also, even though this patient is very young in their 20s, they have this you know, lack of offset at the femoral head and neck junction, this osseous bump. They've already developed you know, subchondral cystic change along the superior lateral acetabulum, which would be very abnormal for someone that's 25 years old, unless they've had you know, something to predispose them to having arthritis like post-traumatic OA, there already is joint space loss. There's probably a moderate amount of joint space loss here along the superior lateral acetabulum. So this patient is already developing, you know, osteoarthritis at a very young age. And it's because of this, you know, CAM type of femoral acetabulum impingement that ultimately leads to osteoarthritis and labral tears. So femoral acetabulum impingement is a morphological abnormality that leads either to osseous, cartilaginous, and or labral impingement, okay? It can lead to all three of those types of impingement. There's two types. There's the CAM type and the pincer type of femoral acetabular impingement. The CAM type, which you saw in this case, is when you have that osseous protuberance at the femoral head neck junction or lack of offset at the femoral head neck junction, right? The pincer type is actually due to over coverage of the acetabulum. So too much of the acetabulum is covering the femoral head and neck. So let's talk about the CAM type. The CAM type is usually seen in tall male patients. It can be seen in anyone, but we often see it in tall male patients. It can also be sequelae of like developmental dysplasia of the hip, leg calf perthes syndrome. You know, there's a lot of things that can predispose to CAM, but often we see it idiopathically or in tall male patients. Typically, these patients can be asymptomatic or they can present with pain with abduction or externally rotating their hip. And really on MRI, we look for a certain amount of findings. On the play film, we look for that osseous protuberance at the femoral head neck junction. But on MRI, we're typically going to see labral tearing, particularly along the anterior superior quadrant. Uh, we may have an increased alpha angle, which is something that we measure on axial oblique images of MRI. If it measures more than 55 degrees, that's suggestive of CAM type FAI. And often there will be an anterior cartilage defect uh, along the acetabulum or the femoral head. So those are some of the findings that we see in the CAM type of femoral acetabular impingement. And this is often treated conservatively. But if it gets very bad, very severe, they're an elite athlete, they may require a femoroplasty, which pretty much just means they shave off that, you know, osseous bump or protuberance at the femoral head neck junction. Now, the pincer type of FAI, this is usually seen, you know, idiopathically, often middle-aged women get this. Patients that have, you know, morphological abnormalities of the acetabulum, like acetabular retroversion, also things like coxa profundo or protrusive acetabuli can predispose a patient to getting pincer FAI. That just means that the position of the femoral head within the acetabulum is not an necessarily anatomic. It may, the femoral head may be protruding too far medially with respect to the acetabulum. That's known as, you know, protruso acetabuli. Those are, can all predispose to getting pincer type. It doesn't mean that they're going to get it, but it predisposes to getting pincer FAI. And patients typically can be asymptomatic here, or they can have pain with flexion or internal rotation of the hip. So that's typically how they're going to present uh, the MRI findings in this case are, you know, over coverage of the acetabulum. We can actually assess that on a plain field. So if you look at a normal AP view of the hip, uh, that lateral, that center edge lateral opening angle that we often measure uh, typically should be 25 to 40 degrees, 25 to 40 degrees. And that tells us how much coverage of the acetabulum there is on the femoral head. But patients with pincer type often have a opening angle of more than 40 degrees. So that means that too much of the acetabulum is covering the femoral head. The opposite problem where there's too little coverage would be developmental dysplasia of the hip where too little acetabulum is covering the femoral head. They often also get marrow edema on the femoral neck because of the impingement of the, of the over coverage of the acetabulum. 
And contrast to CAM type of impingement, the labral tearing is not just confined to the anterior superior quadrant, but often is more extensive, may involve, you know, much greater circumference of the labrum when compared to the CAM type of FAI. Now, often, truth be told, patients have elements of both pincer and CAM type. Often it's not seen in isolation. Some have elements of pincer and CAM in the same patient. So I think that's important to remember as well. This also can be treated conservatively, but again, if it gets very bad, it leads to early osteoarthritis or it's, you know, it's an elite athlete that's really impairing their ability to play at an elite level. They can also do a periacetabular osteotomy, which again, just shaves off part of the acetabulum to make it less covering of, of the femoral head. The most important thing, and I think the teaching point in this case really is, is that both types of FAI, so the CAM and the pincer type, can lead to labral tears and early OA or early osteoarthritis. And that's really can be devastating, especially for a 25-year-old who gets this, you know, no 25-year-old should have osteoarthritis that can lead to chronic pain and can lead to, you know, decreased function in a patient. So these complications can be very devastating. So uh, very important to remember that. Thank you so much for your attention. Tune in next week for another high yield MSK unknown case.